Hi, we are now with Down Down, Program Administrator for the Tobacco Prevention Settlement Program. How are you doing? I'm very good. How are you? I'm doing good. I would like to start by asking you, what is it the Tobacco Prevention Settlement Program does? We're a comprehensive uh, program based at the Santa Barbara County Health Department. And what we try and do is educate the public about the harmful effects of tobacco. It's sort of a big topic. We have three areas that we focus most of our attention in. The first one is called cessation. And what it is is that we try and help current tobacco users when they're ready to quit with the best programs available. We currently have offices in Santa Barbara and Santa Maria, but our cessation services are offered countywide. Mm -hmm. The second thing we do is we're very interested in preventing tobacco use. So the way we work with that is we grant community agencies money to work with youth and young adults to educate them about the harmful effects of tobacco and secondhand smokes. And we train young people to teach their peers about this and also to be advocates for themselves. Lastly, we, uh, we are working with enforcement. It sounds maybe a little odd, but we want to make sure that the tobacco-related policies in our community, both local and state laws, are enforced and, and fully implemented. And we respond to community questions and complaints so that the public knows what is the law and what isn't the law. How are you funded? We have two primary sources of funding. The first one, about 80% of our funding, comes from money from a lawsuit against the tobacco industry. It's known as the Tobacco Settlement. The um, tobacco settlement funds locally have been used all for health and prevention purposes, granting people access to health care. And then our other source of funding is from the original tobacco tax, which was called Prop 99, mm -hmm. and it's the Tobacco Tax Initiative. That's about 20% of our funding stream. Now, how do you help people quit smoking? Well, what we do is we, again, primarily we give away money to the community, to local nonprofits, to work with the people that they're already serving so well in our community. The other thing that's a real benefit that very few other counties offer is we are able to give people the medication support that boosts their quit rates. So nicotine replacement products, which I think people would think of the patch, the gum, the lozenges, as well as the pharmaceuticals that are available only through a doctor. We give those to people for free if they're in our programs. The other thing that we do is we know that quitting smoking is one of the hardest habits to quit. Mm -hmm. So we offer ongoing support in the major cities in the community. We do weekly relapse prevention programs because we know it's not just quitting, it's staying quit that counts. I would like to keep asking you about the enforcement areas that you mentioned before. Okay. I think when you think about uh, tobacco prevention, you would not think about enforcement, yeah. but there are lots and lots of laws and policies in place that promote um, limiting exposure to secondhand smoke, and they in fact help people quit, because the few, fewer places you can smoke, the better. So what we do is we respond to community questions both from residents and from businesses about tobacco related policies. We also work really closely with our local law enforcement and our primary aim there is to make sure that minors do not have access to tobacco. It's illegal for anyone under the age of 18 to possess or to purchase tobacco and since we started to work with law enforcement our sales rates to minors have dropped dramatically. How do you teach young people about tobacco. Okay. I think also people would think that we're in the schools. We don't actually go in and teach classroom presentations. There's other funding for that, but we support the schools and all our local community efforts. So we, we do again provide grants to local nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And what I mostly want to do is introduce you to uh, a couple of people who are working directly with youth in our community involving them in the anti tobacco efforts. Sure. Let's meet. How are you guys? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing good. What's your name again? Chris Anthe. And yours? My name is Rich. And tell me, uh, how old are you? I'm 17. And which high school are you going to? Santa Barbara. And yourself? My name is Rich Sander. I run the Friday Night Live program at all the high schools and junior highs in Santa Barbara County. Good. Now, tell me, uh, what do you think is the most important tobacco-related topic for, for youth? Um, right now, I think it's um, smoke-free parks and beaches. Right now, it's legal to smoke um, on public parks and beaches, and I think that's a really big problem because it makes it look a lot more normal than it actually is. What other programs are there for youth involvement? 
Um, we have a variety of programs. Uh, one is uh, doing cigarette butt cleanups at all the parks and beaches. We also have anti-tobacco poster contests, as well as developing public service announcements, PSAs, and other community involvement with the city council and the board of supervisors. And how can young people get involved? Uh, young people could get involved by either being a part of COYA, the Coalition of Youth Advocates, and that's what Chris Anthe here is president of, and that's made up of youth of, from all the high schools. You could also get involved in any Friday Night Live or Club Live program, which is at all the high schools and junior highs. Thank you both, and good work. Thank you. Thank you. We're back to down here, and I would like to ask you, what are you working on right now? Well, the hot topic right now seems to be secondhand smoke in outdoor areas. This is everything from, as I mentioned before, outdoor patios, drifting smoke in apartments, at beaches and parks, in the entryways to businesses. The other thing that we're very interested in is the fact that litter, cigarette butt litter, seems to be very prominent. It's very hard to, uh, for these products to biodegrade, and it costs a lot to pick these products up, and we're really worried that little kids will put them in their mouth, so we're also trying to reduce cigarette butt litter. Another thing that I think many people don't know is that there's been an, a dramatic increase of smoking in movies. And what we're finding, and the research is showing, is that it makes people more susceptible mm -hmm. and they're more likely to start smoking due to this influence. So what we're planning to do is work with local theaters and of course our youth groups, and also the Santa Barbara International Film Festival to get the word out locally about this um, concern about smoking in movies. Now, finally, we'll have to close it here. Are there opportunities for involvement? Absolutely. We welcome uh, new faces, and you don't need to make a long-term commitment. If you want to get involved in anti-tobacco activities, we will make sure there's something for you to do. There's a role for everybody, and we want to hear the public's voice. Can we get the phone number of the program as well as the website so people can get more information? Absolutely. That number's 805. 681-5407 here in Santa Barbara and our website is www.sbcphd.org slash tobacco. Thank you so much for all that information and I hope your program keeps doing as well as always. Thank you. For more information on the Nonprofit Spotlight, check our website at www.spchannels.tv or call 963-3893. If you'd like your nonprofit featured in a future nonprofit spotlight, contact us at the information on your screen.